Two minutes. Go ahead. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Sisters and brothers, today we're going to celebrate the optional memorial of Pope St. John XXIII. This is the Pope who, who brought us, uh, who initiated and, and started uh, Vatican Council II in the 60s. Let us begin, as we always do, remembering our sins and praising God for his love and mercy. Lord Jesus, come and save us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, come and save us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, come and save us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who chose St. Pope John XXIII to preside over your whole people and benefit them by word and by example, keep safe by his intercessions the shepherds of your church, along with the flocks entrusted to their care, and direct them in the way of eternal salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, realize that it is those who have faith who are children of Abraham. Scripture, which saw in advance that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, foretold the good news to Abraham, saying, Through you shall all the nations be blessed. Consequently, those who have faith are blessed, along with Abraham who had faith. For all who depend on works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not persevere in doing all things written in the book of the law. And that no one is justified before God by the law is clear, for the one who is righteous by faith will live. But the law does not depend on faith. Rather, the one who does these things will live by them. Christ ransomed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might be extended to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart, in the company and assembly of the just. Great are the works of the Lord, exquisite in all their delights. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. Majesty and glory are his work, and his justice endures forever. He has won renown for his wondrous deeds. Gracious and merciful is the Lord. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. He has given food to those who fear him. He will forever be mindful of his covenant. He has made known to his people the power of his works, giving them the inheritance of the nations. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The prince of this world will now be cast out, and and when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all to myself, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When Jesus had driven out a demon, some of the crowd said, By the power of Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will, not, will, not, will be laid waste, and house will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that it is by Beelzebul that I drive out demons. If I then drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your own people drive them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armor on which he relied and distributes the the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When an unclean spirit goes out of someone, it roams through arid regions searching for rest, but finding none, it says, I shall return to my home from which I came. But upon returning, it finds it swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and brings back seven other spirits, more wicked than itself, who move in and dwell there. And the last condition is worse than the first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the optional memorial of, of, of uh, Pope Francis, uh, Pope uh, St. Uh, John XXIII. It was uh, 62 years ago today, 62 years ago today, that, that John XXIII opened uh, the Second Vatican, Vatican Council. And the Second Vatican Council, I think most people would argue, was the most important moment of change for the Catholic Church in about 500 years. Uh, it was, it, and it literally affected every single aspect of uh, daily Catholic life for all Catholics around the world. It, it did some amazing reforms. It, these, uh, all the bishops of the world coming together and together with the Pope making these decisions for reform uh, did amazing things for, for the church. One of the most important things they did, they started to really promote the Bible again in a way that they had not been doing for a long time, and especially promote lay devotion to the Bible and, and having lay people study the Bible. Before Vatican II, lay people really didn't look at the Bible very much. They just sort of 
let the priest read the Bible and they just sort of did what the priest told them to do. But now all of a sudden uh, it, it became a, a, a wonderful thing for a lay person to study the Bible. And, and from that, uh, they, they made changes such as if you come to church every day and you listen to the gospel every day, in three years, you will have listened to over 90% of the gospels. That did not happen before Vatican II. Uh, and then they started looking at the Bible to, to say, well, how should our mass be? Because, of course, what was the first mass, if you will? The first mass was the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper that we read about in the Gospels. So what was that like? Uh, did, when Jesus in that first mass, if you will, Jesus in that first mass, the, the moment he instituted the Eucharist, was he looking at the people or was his back turned toward them? What, did he speak in, in their language? Or did he speak in a language that they didn't understand? So all of a sudden, they, they, they made these reforms of the, the, of the Mass that, so that it would more reflect what happened with Jesus and the Apostles in the Last Supper. It, also, did, did Jesus just give a monologue, just a long speech at the Last Supper? Or was there a dialogue, a back and forth, the Lord be with you and with your spirit? We started all of a sudden wanting to reach out a hand in friendship and fellowship and love to other denominations and, and other religions. And it, uh, we started speaking more uh, boldly about the, the possibility of God saving other people from other religions, whereas before, for the most part, we believed that, that only Catholics were going to heaven. We spoke about the priesthood of the laity, which was always there, but, but now it was uh, sort of promoted that, that all uh, of the laity are, are, are priests. And when, when a priest baptizes a baby, the priest uh, anoints with the very same oil that is used for ordination. Uh, in terms of moral theology, uh, great changes were, were made. It, it was now all of a sudden... Uh, we, of course, looked to the rules of the church, but we also went to Scripture more for a, a decision about a moral choice that we have to make in our lives and, uh, and, and also our own individual prayer. These are just a few of the, of the examples. One way to sort of summarize it to, to a great extent is that I, I think it's safe to say that that most devout Catholics before Vatican II lived their lives out of fear, fear of God and fear of hell, whereas most devout Catholics today live their lives out of gratitude for God's salvation through Jesus Christ. And so it changed everything in, in, in many ways. I'm deeply devoted to John the 23rd and to Vatican II because I'm a product of Vatican II. Uh, my, my parents sort of went through a renewal of their own personal faith because of Vatican II and then raised me that way. I was raised on the tenets of Vatican II and I really think it's uh, fairly certain that I wouldn't be a priest today if it weren't for Vatican II. And I'm almost sure that I wouldn't be a happy priest if, uh, if, if I were a priest at all. And so uh, today, perhaps we can pause and just give great thanksgiving for, for Vatican II, for, for the fact that, the, that, the, that God continues, God never stopped uh, uh, helping us to grow spiritually, helping us to mature spiritually, that we don't remain the same, that we're constantly learning new things about God and about how to worship God and live our lives. And let's also give a nod of thanksgiving to our good, good Pope John, Pope John the Twenty-Third, for initiating that that bold uh, Second Vatican Council. So let us stand and bring our prayers before the Lord. Let us pray in thanksgiving for the Second Vatican Council. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray in thanksgiving for good Pope John, 
pray for uh, it, that we, we might follow his example, that we might constant, constantly be looking for ways in which God is calling us to grow and mature as a person and as a church. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray for today's intention for the repose of the soul of Jack Mottinger. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And let's, of course, pray with great de devotion and fervor for uh, the people in Florida suffering from the hurricanes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Seeking the goodness of the Lord, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That children who do not have access to fresh food and water will be granted sustenance, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That nations who have chosen to go to war against their own people may instead choose peace, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That families who have estranged members come to find reconciliation and softened hearts, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That lawmakers may work always for solidarity, understanding, and the common good, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the sick and suffering here and throughout the world will find new hope, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That all who have died awaiting the joy of Christ awaken in his everlasting light, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Grant our supplication, we pray, O Lord, that this sacrifice, which we present on the feast day of John the 23rd, may be for our good, since through its offering you have loosed the offenses of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Today I will use the Eucharistic prayer called God Guides His Church Along the Way of Salvation, written after Vatican II and in the spirit of Vatican II. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Creator of the world, source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world. You accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom. And so with the angels and the saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread from the table and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and Gregory our Bishop, with all of the bishops and the priests and the deacons and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. Remember all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our own earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with John the Twenty-Third and all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray to the Father in the words of the Son. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. 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 Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, stir up in us that fire of love with which St. John the Twenty-Third burned ardently as he, as he gave himself unceasingly for your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. You got it? You figured it out? Okay, great.